Live from KSA 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. The Florida condo collapse death toll rises again, but search and rescue teams are still hopeful. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Miami Beach. The latest coming up. And a look outside with live cam, 74 degrees. We saw some showers yesterday. We might see some more today. Justin, tracking your forecast. There are some showers on the radar. Good morning. It is Tuesday, June 29th. Thanks for joining us. Did you get some showers yesterday? No, I didn't, but I'm looking at this one climbing <laughs> up right behind Justin's shoulder, headed up close. <laughs> Uh, David's, my fingers crossed. He's, David's hoping, man. I, yeah. I am telling I was you. telling the rain myself. Uh, a lot of people did get rain yesterday. We've got some rain on the radar this morning. So if you didn't get rain yesterday, hold that hope, David. All right. We're sending it your way. Radar is showing right now. We've got a cluster of showers moving through Wilson County into Guadalupe County and even the eastern parts of Bear County. We've had some showers here in town. Just had one here at the station. They're quick. They don't last very long, but they'll put down some quick, heavy rain. This cluster is bringing the heaviest rain this morning, right around New Berlin, so far eastern Bear County and Guadalupe County. This is going to work into Seguin. So Seguin and along I-10, you'll see some wet roads this morning as this tracks through. This is going to put down maybe a quick tenth of an inch, and it uh, stretches all the way down to Sutherland Springs in Stockdale. Meantime, here in San Antonio, we've had a couple of showers come through. I know it's kind of hard to see on this screen, but uh, right through downtown, right around the Pearl, we've seen a couple of downpours. Bottom line, just like yesterday, about a 40% chance of rain during the afternoon. There's the bigger picture. And you can see we still got some action off the coast. And this is all working into Texas. Good, deep moisture. And that's also helping to keep temperatures down. Yesterday, we did briefly get up to 90, but uh, we'll be in the upper 80s, close to 90 again today. 20% chance of rain through the morning. We up it to a 40% chance during the afternoon. It becomes a little bit more widespread. Rain chances calm a little bit by the end of the week, but pick back up for the 4th of July. We're going to take a look at that forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Police say an argument between two men in their 20s ended with one of them being shot. This all went down on the northeast side last night in the 6900 block of North Vendiver Road near Eisenhower. Police say at one point, one of the men pulled the gun and shot the other in the upper abdomen before taking off. Police say they caught up with the suspect in another location and questioned him. The victim was taken to the hospital in critical condition. This morning, authorities have pulled out two more victims from the rubble of the collapsed Florida condo building. The death toll now has risen to 11 as 150 people remain unaccounted for. ABC's Faith Abube is near the scene with the latest in the search and rescue operation. This morning, officials mentally preparing loved ones of those still missing in the Florida condo building collapse of the grim reality. We have them coping with the news that they might not have their loved ones come out alive and still hope against hope that they will. But hope and faith still driving the effort as search and rescue teams make progress through the debris. There are certain areas that we have not gotten to, but we've been able to place cameras that seem to have large enough spaces, voids, that occupants may still be in there. The investigation into what caused the sudden collapse also intensifying. A report in the Wall Street Journal citing a letter reportedly written by the Condo Association president just this April, explaining the need for millions of dollars in repairs, warning that damage to the building's basement garage had gotten significantly worse since the 2018 inspection. The Miami Herald also publishing these photos, not independently confirmed by ABC News, saying it shows cracks in the concrete, exposed rebar and wet floor in the pool equipment room, which is in the garage under the pool deck. They were taken less than two days before the collapse. Experts say it appears the failure started at the bottom of the building. When I look at the video, I feel it looks like it starts from the bottom of the building and works its way up. 88-year-old Esther Gorfinkel was in the building when part of it came crashing down. In my old age, that I would see something so horrible like this. And I'm seeing all the rumble, all the, the cement, the ceiling, everything is falling down. And people are yelling, I don't know how many people are going, help me, help me, get me out. And that resident, Steve Rosenthal, is now suing the Condo Association for, among other things, negligence. In Miami Beach, Faith Abube, ABC News. President Joe Biden scheduled to speak in La Crosse, Wisconsin today. The White House says he's going to try to drum up support for a bipartisan infrastructure deal. He'll also talk about agricultural and rural economies. Agricultural Secretary Tom Vilsack is set to join Biden for the trip. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is holding out for a broader infrastructure package than Senate Republicans currently have on the table. 
Tropical Storm Danny made landfall last night on South Carolina's coast, threatening to dump heavy rains on parts of the southeast as it moves inland. The U.S. National Hurricane Center says the storm had top sustained winds of 40 miles per hour as it moved ashore just north of Hilton Head on Pritchard's Island. Danny is moving into east central Georgia, rapidly weakening overland. The fourth named storm this Atlantic hurricane season formed close to South Carolina's coast during the afternoon Monday. A proposed NCAA policy letting college athletes profit off their name, image, and likeness has taken another step towards approval with the Division I Council recommending it. Next up, the Division I Board of Directors will meet tomorrow to vote on the recommendation. Under the policy, college athletes could profit off their NIL without violating NCAA rules. College athletes are considered amateurs and receive compensation in the form of scholarships and school-related expenses, but players have long advocated for financial benefits related to their athletic ability. Time now, 436, 74 degrees outside. Still cut up this morning, window AC units can feel like a miracle in the hot Texas heat, but there are things you need to know so they can not catch on fire. And up next, an update on a head coaching position from a former Spurs assistant. Plus, Kawhi Leonard sitting out Game 5 of the Western Conference Final. Once again, outside with live cam, some showers to the northeast. Justin Horn, sketch forecast, and a look at those showers and see if it's going to keep raining throughout the day. Coming up. As we wait for news about Becky Hammond's journey to be the first women's NBA head coach, there's better news for another former Spurs assistant, Ime Udoka was just introduced as the new head coach of the Boston Celtics, the 18th head coach in the storied franchise. He takes over for Brad Stevens, who moves up into the Celtics front office as the president of the team, succeeding Danny Age, who's announced he's going to retire. Udoka played professional basketball for 12 years, seven in the NBA before moving into coaching. He was an assistant under Spurs head coach Greg Popovich for seven seasons before moving to the Philadelphia 76ers and most recently the Brooklyn Nets. He says one thing that will help him with some of the game's superstars is his time as an assistant with Pop. You know, it's an honor to be part of this historic franchise. And in our conversations, in the interviews, the Zoom interviews, it, it was pretty evident and clear early on that me and Brad had a pretty good connection. Um, and when I got with the whole crew, Allison as well, it was, it was their passion that, that was attractive to me. Obviously, the roster is great. But the relationships I have with those players, and it's, it's easy to see why this, this, this organization has been so successful. The people I've met today, um, it, it it's, takes me to my San Antonio days, and whether it's Philadelphia, Brooklyn, good people in the good building, and, and I look forward to having the success with you guys. The relationships have been great, and I look forward to building those. But um, as far as the players and the roster, I'm very excited and honored to be part of it. And like you said, let's go for 18. Uh, 18 championship, that is. One of the people Ime is expected to add to his staff is Spurs assistant coach Will Hardy. Looks like that's going to be a done deal pretty soon. Meanwhile, Kawhi Leonard not in Phoenix last night, even though his Clippers are facing elimination from here on out in the Western Conference Finals. Leonard stayed behind in Los Angeles to take care of his right knee that has kept him out of action since Game 4 of the Western Conference Finals. Didn't want him flying with that knee. Might hurt it in the air. Last night, Phoenix had a chance to close out the series at home, but the Clippers started strong with their season on the line and didn't slow down. Terrence Mann muscles inside for two. They got out to a 7-0 lead. Suns get back in it. Cameron Johnson hits a three. Phoenix pulls back within six with the Clippers strike late in the quarter. Reggie Jackson scores high off the glass. The first quarter was all L.A. 36-26 after one, and they go on to turn up the heat. Los Angeles Clippers win it 116-102. They stay alive even though they're down 3-1. So many changes, and I'm still looking forward to seeing what happens with Becky. Yeah, running out of opportunities this year, but there'll be more next year, maybe even the Spurs head coaching job one of these days. Let's hope. <laughs> we'll hope. Time now, 441. 74 degrees. The rising temperatures and putting a strain on the window units. Up next, we take a look at what can happen if they are not properly maintained. And next, 47 million of your best friends will be traveling alongside you if you're planning a 4th of July weekend getaway. We'll get a first look at tips and tricks that you need to beat the rush. 
Welcome back. According to AAA, more than 47 million people will be traveling this 4th of July, hitting near pre-pandemic levels. ABC's Gio Benitez has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, counting down to what could be the biggest travel weekend of the year. More than 47 million people expected to hit the roads and skies for the holiday weekend, potentially making it the second highest 4th of July travel volume on record. Compared to 2019, travel volume by car is actually up. The 43 million of Americans that are going to be traveling by car for the holiday, that's 5% more than we saw in 2019. And by air, 3.5 million are expected to fly. American Airlines is still canceling dozens of flights per day because of a major pilot shortage. And Southwest has canceled hundreds in the last week, blaming weather and IT issues. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have the tips and tricks you need to beat the rush, avoid the cancellation crush, and still have a great trip. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News. You know, many people rely on their window AC units to keep cool every day, and with the temperatures rising, so does the risk of a fire. Here's 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moritz, with some things you can do to minimize the potential hazard and stay cool. It took only minutes for fire to destroy the home in Larry Lampkin's family for decades. He was out back when the dogs began to bark. I smell the smoke and I start looking around. I look off the side of the house and this is a barrel and black smoke coming out the side of the house. Coming from this, Lampkin says he had just reinstalled the window AC units because recent storms knocked out the central air. It all started in that window unit in the middle bedroom. On average nationally, there are 2,800 reports of fires a year linked to air conditioners, causing 20 deaths and $182 million in damage. Experts say soaring temperatures can overwork and strain a window AC if not properly maintained, increasing fire risk. So what can you do to be cool and safe in your home? The San Antonio Fire Department offered some important advice. Keep the filters clean of dust and debris. Never use an extension cord. Put the AC on its own circuit and be sure the wiring is sufficient for the load. And hire a licensed professional to install or check it out at least once a year. Exactly what caused this mess is not officially determined, but for this couple, just trying to stay cool proved costly. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. Rain kept the temperatures down, and it looks like we're getting more rain today. However, you did say scattered thunderstorms, right? It and did, that, and that yes. Was said. And so yeah. if you look, there's a few holes here and there. That's mm -hmm. what that means, right? Yeah, there's a hole right there. So if you're in the <laughs> northern part of Bear County or Kamal County or parts of Kindle County, no rain for you yesterday, sorry to say. But there were some good numbers. You get out towards Pipe Creek, one and a half inches. Sutherland Springs, two tenths. Smiley, close to an inch. Moulton, over an inch. Pleasanton, nearly a quarter of an inch. Divine, over an inch. The airport didn't get any rainfall yesterday. So technically, in San Antonio, the, there wasn't any rain. Stinson did get seven hundredths of an inch. But there is some shower activity this morning. We'll see more chances today. So as we said yesterday, if you didn't get any, there are more chances down the line. Uh, you see the activity already starting to build here around Beeville and Kennedy. This will all work its way north and west towards San Antonio. We're also seeing some spotty activity as you get out in the hill country. These are pretty light, but they will put down a brief shower. Uh, looking around uh, Seguin this morning, this is where the heaviest of the rain is. Starting to work into Seguin should be there in about uh, 10 minutes or so. You're going to start to see some wet roads there. I-10 already starting to see some of that rain. Far East Bear County, if you're east of 1604, the rain is coming down. New Berlin seeing some uh, downpour activity right now. Lavernia as well. You've seen the rain this morning. That little cluster is working north and west. Meantime, here in San Antonio, we've had a couple showers work through downtown, and now that shower just to the east of I-10 working through Balcones Heights or just to the east of Balcones Heights, and that'll move in around 410 and uh, I-10 here within the next few minutes. So there are going to be some wet roads this morning if you're going to be uh, up and early to work. Looking at the big picture with the radar, still lots of moisture off the coast that'll be shifting in today. Good news for Texas. It's not raining just here. I mean, there's rain area wide across the state, and it uh, is rainfall that we'll take and we do need right now. 74 degrees at the airport, mostly cloudy skies, calm winds, temperatures in the 70s, mid to upper 70s, 
And there are some clouds out there too, uh, mostly cloudy skies in a lot of spots. Forecast for today takes those uh, spotty showers through the area. This is around 3 o'clock, shows some rain even here in San Antonio, but don't pay too close attention to the location. It's going to be that spotty nature just like yesterday. And then tomorrow, I think the coverage is a little bit lower. We start to see high pressure building in. Still a chance for showers tomorrow. I just don't think it'll be as widespread. Right now we have about a 30% chance forecast today up around 88, 40% chance of rain. Here's the big setup. We got high pressure off the east coast. There's Danny that moved in around Georgia and that big ridge up north. The numbers yesterday, nothing short of incredible. Here's some of the records broken on Monday. Portland all time record max temperature 115. Seattle all time max temperature 108. Washington all time maximum temperature 118. Canada's all time maximum temperature 118. You just don't see records like this. This is a one in 1,000 year ridge of high pressure, some scientists are calling it. Uh, just very interesting. And we're going to see more heat again today. The numbers come down a little bit in Seattle and Portland, but Canada still under the gun. 105 there in British Columbia. Forecast for us, 88 degrees today, 90 tomorrow, 30% chance of rain. 10% Thursday, 20% Friday. So there'll be a little bit of a lull there with some warmer temperatures. But the rain chances come back this weekend. Of course, the all important 4th of July holiday there. Right now, 40% chance of rain. Uh, we'll try to get uh, timing down a little bit as we get closer there. But uh, I know we've got a lot of plans and it could be a little bit wet. And as we saw, a lot of people are going to be hitting the roads. So that's going to be crucial to be watching the weather. Correct. And it's not just us. Like this last go around, yeah, all of Texas will likely get some rain out of this. All right. Thanks, Justin. Yep. 451 and 74 degrees. Up next, lots of music news, including the latest song by popular band BTS. That continues its reign at the top of the charts. And as we go to break, here's some lottery numbers for you. Pick three, nine, nine, zero, fireball zero. And your daily four is six, five, zero, four, fireball is nine. And your cash five, four, 20, 26, 31, 33. Your Texas two-step, two, 23, 24, 36. Welcome back. It is 454. The latest song by BTS continues to break records. Plus, Martin Sheen is taking on the role of a football coach. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Let's go! The BTS song, Butter, showing no sign of melting. Number one for a fifth week in a row on the Billboard Hot 100 singles chart. In second... Olivia Rodrigo's Good For You, the last song to hit number one just before Butter debuted. It's been the top song on streaming for six weeks. And Rodrigo's album Sour returns to number one on the Billboard 200 album chart on radio. You want me, I want you, baby. My sugar boo, I'm levitating. Dua Lipa's Levitating might be third on the singles chart, but it's the most played song on the airwaves, according to Billboard. I'm E.P. Hall. They call me Doc. Martin Sheen knows a thing or two about football. He plays one of the coaches in 12 Mighty Orphans, a film based on the true story of a Depression-era high school football team made up of orphans. And he tells me he played when he was a kid, though it's probably best he became an actor. I played quarterback, and uh, we played offense and defense. And I was prone to injury. I was small and uh, very fast but uh, not fast enough sometimes to get out of the way of the bigger guys. <laughs> 12 Mighty Orphans is in theaters now. One, two, three, Mars! And happy birthday to Colin Jost. The Saturday Night Live co-head writer is 39 today, while singer and TV personality Nicole Scherzinger is 43. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. David, Justin tells me you can dance just like BTS. <laughs> just like them. <laughs> I should be on that stage with them. You should. You wouldn't be able to tell me from the other kids. Nope. <laughs> the kids. 456, 74 degrees. Thanks, Justin. I appreciate the compliment, though. Still, still ahead on GMSA, the hottest day of an unprecedented and dangerous heat wave has scorched the Pacific Northwest. We'll get an update on how people are dealing with this extreme heat. And if you're an Android user and have Netflix, you're in luck. We'll tell you about a new feature you can take advantage of coming up in Tech Bite. With showers rolling in and there's traffic picking up, Stephen Cavazos will join us in the next half hour with more details. 
Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, extremely hot temperatures continue to plague the Pacific Northwest. We'll take a look at how people are adapting. And here's a look at what things look like outside with live cam. We've had some showers in the area already expected to continue throughout the day today. Justin Horn's got that for you coming up. Good morning. It is Tuesday, June 29th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Um, we are seeing those showers, so remember to take your umbrella today just in case you're stuck underneath one of those showers. Today. And I got a feeling you're going to need some patience on the road this morning because some of the roads are wet. But let's start with that weather. Yeah, there's some rain coming down, and Stephen will have a look at those roads here in just a second. Uh, here in San Antonio, we didn't get a whole lot of rain yesterday, but we got cloud cover that kept temperatures down, and there was rain in the surrounding areas. Some decent numbers, in fact. Right now, we're looking at 74. Four degrees easterly winds at about five miles per hour. Dew point is at 72, so it's awful humid. Temperatures today should be right where they were yesterday. Upper 80s, close to 90. Rain showers around this afternoon. So Tiffany's right. Have the umbrella with you as you head out the door this morning. You'll want it this afternoon for sure, or even this morning. Take a look at the radar. Showers working their way to the north and west. And you can see some of that activity is starting to move into parts of San Antonio. Some heavier rain down closer to the coast, but here in town, nice little shower downpour just to the west of Churchill, uh, moving up towards uh, Chavanel Park right there along Northwest Military. That'll work its way up towards 1604 here within the next 20 minutes or so. I-10, if you're traveling south, there's going to be some wet spots there and likely some heavier rain right around the medical center as uh, that little shower moves north and west. We mentioned the heavier rains out near Seguin. The, the, the rain has moved in now, and we're getting some rain right along I-10, Marion, uh, to uh, uh, New Braunfels, getting some rain, or at least it's on your doorstep. It'll be there very quickly. Shirts, Selma, up uh, towards Converse. Expect some rain there as well here within the next few minutes or so. And a little bigger picture here. You can see that uh, rain again moving north and west, and we'll see more of this during the afternoon with some of that daytime heating. Forecast calls for high right around uh, 88, as I mentioned, and the rain chances steadily increase as we get into the afternoon. How are those roads looking right now? Let's check in with Stephen Cavazos for the latest. Hey, thanks so much, Justin. Well, we know that when the rain comes, that tends to make some pretty wet conditions out on the roadway. And this is a view from Transguide at 35 at Pine. Just take a look right over here. It looks like the road is glistening right behind us, and we have some vehicles that are out there. So an indication that the roads are wet this morning, and you're going to want to be extra cautious when you're heading out the door. And like Tiffany said, pack your umbrella. And also, like David said, pack that patience. Take it extra slow when we have these conditions out on the roadway. Let's go ahead and bring it to a crash show that did happen a little bit earlier this morning. It looks like that just popped off from our radar as you just saw. This was on I-35 southbound at Austin Street. We had a few crashes that happened uh, over the last few minutes, but those look like they have quickly resolved. But take a look at where this crash happened. Now, if you are familiar with this, this is our road weather map. This gives us an indication on what the wet the conditions are looking like right now out on the roadways. All that green does mean that we do have wet roads right now. You can see a lot of that here between I-10 and 37. Looks like we may even have an issue happening up here. Uh, we're going to continue to monitor those conditions throughout the day and see how they're going to develop or throughout the morning, I should say, because of that rainfall. But bringing over here to our inbound times right now, things are still looking relatively normal. Let's start here on I-10 coming in from Bernie. We have 24 minutes to the downtown San Antonio area. If you are coming in from Bolverde, 25 minutes on 281 and take a look right here on 35. While the southbound lanes are looking like a 26 minute commute time coming in from New Braunfels, that little yellow and orange that you're seeing right there is a little bit of congestion that we've spotted. That's because there is some construction that is happening out there. We're going to bring that image to you right here through Transguide. So again, be very cautious out on the roadways. This construction on the northbound lanes of 35 should be wrapping up momentarily. We'll be watching it and definitely those conditions and see how they may impact your morning commute. David Tiffany. Thank you, Stephen. Check back with you in just a few minutes. Hey, just a few months ago, we were experiencing extreme cold and snow that drained the state's power grid. Now the opposite is going on in the Pacific Northwest. Nearly 70 million Americans are under heat alerts. ABC's Mona Kosar Abdi has the details. This morning, the historic heat wave is bringing the hottest temperatures ever recorded in the Pacific Northwest. It has been pretty brutal. Portland hitting 115 degrees Monday, shattering the city's all-time heat record for the third consecutive day. 
They're incredible numbers out there. Something we've never seen here in Western Oregon or in Southwestern Washington, Lincoln. As you can see, 115 degrees. That 115 temperature is 42 degrees hotter than the average June day for Portland. In Seattle, the mercury hit 106 degrees, breaking that city's all-time heat record set just the day before. The dangerous heat hitting a region accustomed to mild weather, where many people don't have air conditioning. Right now, several hotels in the Seattle area are posting no vacancy signs as people book rooms to stay cool. I've lived all over um, from Southern Virginia to Mississippi to Los Angeles, and I've never had to do this in my life. To the south, hot and dry conditions also fueling wildfires in California, including the so-called lava fire along the Oregon border. Up to 10,000 residents nearby were placed under evacuation orders after authorities say lightning sparked the fire over the weekend. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. Back here at home, the San Antonio police make a third arrest in the case of a so-called fiesta bandit. 19-year-old Victor Cornejo joins Emmanuel Alonzo and Emmanuel Gadanez in being accused of the crimes. All three have been booked on burglary charges. Police say they stole from and in some cases vandalized vendor booths at Market Square during fiestas overnight hours. It's a story we first brought you here on GMSA. San Antonio fire officials are still investigating the cause of a fire that destroyed an apartment building on the northwest side. It happened at the residences at medical apartments on Babcock. One family of seven says they were awakened by the flames despite not hearing a smoke alarm they say wasn't working. I don't sleep, you know. I keep smelling this stuff, you know. When I wake up, my family, you know, the fires big in this roof, you know. At that point, that point, you know, you, you can, you know, go hand for nothing, you know. Just take care of your family and that's it, you know. The family says the American Red Cross is helping them. The apartment complex is also offering another unit to the eight total families affected. We reached out to the complex's corporate office in Austin for comment and have yet to get a response. San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers need your help solving an arson case where a local business was targeted. It happened back on April 7th at East Las Automotive, located in the 1400 block of Calabria Road. SAPD tells us that they suspect a Molotov cocktail was used to set fire to a vehicle parked outside of the automotive shop. Arson investigators believe the shop owner was the target of the crime. If you have any information, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. You could get a cash reward for information you provide. Time now, 507, 74 degrees outside. Still cutting up this morning, details on a new version of the iPad, which could end up being a 16-inch version of the iPad Pro. We are talking to a local historian about why he thinks Stephen F. Austin is not the true father of Texas. And once again, back outside with live cam, if you're just waking up, there are some showers in the area. So that means the roads are a little slick around town this morning. So we've got all that information for you. Details coming up with Justin and Steven. Stay with us. We'll be right back. You're watching Good Morning San Antonio. Good morning and welcome back. It is 511. You know, last week in our Tejano Moment series, we talked about Don Jose Antonio Navarro and the role he played in Texas politics. Now in the final part of our series, we are talking to a local historian about why he thinks Navarro is the true father of Texas. GMSA producer Rosalind Jimenez has a story. We talked earlier about uh, his ascension politically uh, uh, in business. And uh, he's at the pinnacle. He's at the height of his career politically. And at a time period, the revolution is brewing. Rudy Rodriguez, a local historian and founder of TexasTejano.com, says by 1835, Tejanos and Texians came together to claim liberty. Don Jose and his uncle, Colonel Francisco Ruiz, were elected to represent Bear County. They went on to sign the Texas Declaration in 1836. Several weeks later, the Alamo fell. Then, finally, victory during the Battle of San Jacinto set Texas free. He's exactly the man that Texas needs at that moment. About a decade later, Nevada was the only Tejano delegate in the Convention of 1845. He voted for annexation and helped write the first state constitution. He was also elected twice to the state Senate before retiring from politics in 1849. Because of his political contributions, some have called him Father of Texas, a title most often held by Stephen F. Austin. 
But Rodriguez says he feels Novato is the one worthy of the title. He epitomized the, the success, the strength of uh, a businessman, uh, a politician. Uh, he represents uh, a family, uh, his family, a uh, family at the Hanos that have been here for over a hundred years. Uh, he represents that. He's also someone that uh, defines society and culture. I would suggest that certainly he, he merits uh, the title of uh, father of Texas. Novato's political success is just one of the many things that he did that helped make Texas what it is today. Rosalind Jimenez, KSAT 12 News. If you missed the first two parts of Navarro's story, you can find them right now on ksat.com. Just search Tejano Moments. Yeah, later on on GMSA at 9, Rosalind's going to join us for a debrief about this entire series. That'll be a special and very interesting. Very so, interesting. Well, so. Time now, 513, 74 degrees. Coming up next, Netflix is showing off new feature for Android users. Want to meet the unicorn of cleaning? Mr. Clean Magic Erasers. Over 100 ways to use. And for those really messy jobs in hard to reach places, try disposable thin sheets. For asthma, there's primatine mist. When symptoms strike, your airways narrow and there's less breathing room. Primatine mist is clinically shown to open airways quickly. Get the number one FDA approved over the counter asthma inhaler and breathe easy again. Okay, everyone, our mission is to provide complete balanced nutrition for strength and energy. Insure with 27 vitamins and minerals. Now introducing Insure Complete with 30 grams of protein. In today's Tech Bytes, Facebook shares have hit a new milestone, pushing its market value beyond $1 trillion. The surge came after a judge dismissed two antitrust lawsuits by the Federal Trade Commission and more than 40 states, saying they failed to prove that Facebook is a monopoly. But Congress or the Supreme Court will likely get the final say. Reports say Apple engineers are exploring the idea of creating iPads with screens in the 14 to 16 inch range. The iPad with the biggest screen for sale right now is 12 inches. According to Bloomberg, the larger iPads wouldn't hit stores until 2023 at the earliest. And Netflix users on Android can now stream content before their download is even finished. That means one less aggravation if your Wi-Fi isn't perfect. Netflix plans to test the feature on iOS in the near future. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. Welcome back. Showers are picking up, so you know what that means. Ro Wet roads. Exactly. And somebody might be doing something a little crazy like driving too fast. So we don't want any of that because that would keep us very busy and that would create some very dangerous conditions out on the roadway. Of course, we want people to be very safe. Be cautious because the roads are wet around town. Let's go ahead and jump to some construction, though, that we're seeing up here at 35 at FM 1103. We talk about this usually every morning because it's obviously a headache for drivers heading north into New Braunfels. You can see that the traffic is not picking up. Uh, traffic is picking up, but it's not really going anywhere right now. Usually that construction is done around five in the morning, uh, but it looks like it's taking a little bit longer uh, today. Let's go ahead and jump to the maps and see what that's looking like right now. 37 miles per hour. Uh, so traffic again, slowing down out there towards 35 right going up to New Braunfels. So just take it easy out over there. Now we want to bring you over here to some issues that are happening right now. This is a stall that's actually caused an entry ramp to be closed from Frio Street, uh, and it's right over there off I-35 southbound. You can see that it's still very early enough to where we're not seeing any issues are backups because of this ramp closure, but be cautious because we do have a stalled vehicle out there. We also have another issue happening here off I-10 westbound at Kaufman. You can see that uh, there's some debris that's actually out on the roadway. We've been working with our friends at TransGuide to see if they can get us an image. Uh, what we've seen is that it's a very, very dark spot, so just be cautious heading out there as well because if that debris is still out there, it could be an issue. And another issue we want you to be aware of is all this green. As we just talked about a little while ago, this is all the wet roads that right now that we have 
have in our area because of that overnight or early morning rainfall, I should say. Uh, just we see a lot of it again here between I-10 and 37 and right where these issues are happening. So be careful and even up here towards 35, uh, which could make it even more dangerous if you're not being cautious. So both hands on the wheel today. Take it slow, bringing it back here to 35 at FM 1103. Doesn't look like traffic is going anywhere anytime soon, guys. All right, Stephen, thank you very much. You can see right there behind Justin. We get more and more as the morning goes on. Yeah, the, the radar is busier this morning than it was yesterday, and we're going to see scattered showers and storms again today. The radar should be fairly active most of the day. We've got a nice little cluster of rain working through the northeast side of San Antonio. Seguin and New Braunfels all getting rain right now, and this is uh, heavy, at least in patches it is, along I-35. So Garden Ridge, Selma, Shirts, you're getting good rain right now, and so is New Braunfels, at least the uh, west side of New Braunfels now as this moves in. Uh, some other activity up near San Marcos. We're seeing showers and probably a few rumbles of thunder there around Seguin, New Berlin, and then back over into San Antonio. We've had some showers now working up towards uh, I-10 and 1604 right there around the rim. And then we're seeing uh, some showers that worked their way through Castle Hills a little bit earlier. More showers there on the far northwest side of Bear County as well. And uh, if you didn't get rain yesterday, again, there, there are some more chances here. We've got some showers that are working through Atascosa County. Those should work up into southern Bear County. Floresville seeing a little bit of a shower. Kennedy down towards Goliad. So it's good to see that the radar is already a little bit active and hopefully we can get some decent rainfall totals, much like what we saw yesterday. Some of the estimates here close to an inch, if not a little bit more in some spots. You can see where the, the patches of heavier rain was. Uh, and that's going to be the nature of this activity. Very patchy, localized areas getting the good rain. There was actually kind of a hole right over northern parts of San Antonio. The airport did not register any rain yesterday, but uh, more chances today. Bigger picture here across Texas. Pretty active pattern. You see the showers and storms working north through west Texas. A lot of cloud cover that really helps with temperatures. Right now we're sitting at 74 at the airport. 76 Stinson, 75 Kelly, 73 Randolph. You've got a light easterly wind. Temperatures 70s to go around 75 Canyon Lake, 74 Gonzales, 78 out in Del Rio and the forecast for today. More showers, waves of some uh, downpours. This is around three o'clock. Then as we get into tomorrow, I think the coverage tomorrow is going to be a little bit less high pressures trying to build in. Still, we'll have the opportunity for a few more downpours during the afternoon. Today, we'll call for a 40% chance rain. We'll top out in the upper 80s. Very quickly, let's talk about the tropics. We've been mentioning Enrique last couple days. Didn't make it into hurricane status. Now a tropical storm. This thing will die down. Bring some rain to places like Cabo. Meantime, remnants of Danny. Danny formed very quickly yesterday off the coast of South Carolina. Brought some good rain there. Winds. 25 miles per hour. This thing's falling apart as it moves into parts of uh, Alabama. And then looking farther south, we do have a system that's out in the Atlantic here. Uh, this has about a 40% chance of development over the next five days as it moves towards the Leeward Islands. As it gets past the islands, I don't know that there's uh, great conditions for this to develop further, but we'll certainly watch it. If it did get a name, Danny's off the list now. Next name would be Elsa and then Fred followed by Grace. Uh, those are the names we have this year. Uh, forecast, 40% chance of rain today, 30% uh, chance tomorrow. Notice temperatures heat up Thursday and Friday. Rain chances are going to be a little bit lower. The weekend brings more scattered showers and storms. And the 4th of July could be a little bit wet. Right now, 89, 40% chance of rain is what we have in the forecast. After some extremely hot days, this rain is welcomed. It really is. I mean, I think as long as we have a somewhat rainy pattern in the summer, We'll absolutely take it. Yeah. Don't want to see any destructive hurricanes, but Fred is kind of a cool name for mm. There's some interesting names on the list this year, that's for sure. Fred. Fred. Thanks, Justin. Mm -hmm. Coming up next on your <laughs> morning spotlight. Details on Ringo Starr's Peace and Love Wish. Plus, Harry Potter is returning to Broadway. And welcome back. 526 Entertainment News now featuring a major movie star and a former Beatle. Here's CNN's David Daniel with today's Hollywood Minute. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. 
Ringo Starr is asking fans to help him spread peace and love on his birthday, July 7th. At noon local time that day, Starr hopes you'll post, say, or even just think, peace and love. The legendary musician turns 81 this year. But the boy who lived, lives on. Harry Potter and the Cursed Child is returning to Broadway with one major change. Pre-pandemic, it had been presented in two parts, but now, reducio, it's been reconceived as a single show. The curtain goes back up November 16th. Tickets go on sale to the public July 12th. Dwayne Johnson is looking to reinvent the holiday movie. His production company is teaming with Amazon Studios on Red One, described as a globe-trotting action-adventure comedy featuring a whole new universe to explore within the holiday genre. Amazon won a bidding war for the film, which it's hoping to shoot next year for a 2023 holiday release. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 527 and 74 degrees. Experts say the Delta variant, a strain of COVID-19 believed to be more transmissible, dangerous than others, will be hyper regionalized. We'll take a look at which areas are most at risk. And plus why arguing too much with your spouse could lead to an early death. We'll take a look at the results of the study. And Hallmark is making it even easier to send your favorite greetings to loved ones. We'll have details on how their new app works. Making headlines this morning, why experts say the Delta variant strain of COVID-19 is believed to be more transmissible and dangerous than others. And taking a live look outside, 74 degrees, wet roads this morning. Stephen and Justin tracking your roads and weather. And if your alarm's going off, you're right, it's Tuesday, it's June 29th, and it's a good morning to you. Yeah, and some of you are waking up to some showers. David has been doing this the whole morning, trying to push the showers towards his house. We'd like to see some, <laughs> some rain. There was that little gap in there yesterday. You <laughs> we want to share the wealth. Missed out. So. Rain for everybody. Yes, some folks did miss out yesterday, and then other people got over an inch of rain. That is the nature, though, of this activity. It's going to be spotty. There's going to be some good downpours. Some yards are going to get a good drink. Others may not. But uh, we see that there is activity coming through parts of Carnes County this morning and then moving into Wilson County, Atascosa County, and here in San Antonio. We've seen some showers and some good downpours this morning. So grab the umbrellas you had out the door. You'll want it today. Uh, Seguin, still looking at good rain. I would imagine, just looking at this, that we may pick up a quick quarter, half an inch there in town. New Braunfels, Heavy rain's really just on your doorstep. You've seen some across the western part of the city, but now it looks like some heavier rain trying to move in, although it's right around the radar site, so it's kind of hard to see. And then Shirt, Selma, Garden Ridge, you've got some rain out there too. And here in San Antonio, we've been looking at some of these uh, quicker moving downpours right along I-10, stretching up towards uh, Leon Springs now, and then another little shower just to the west of Holotus, and then other activity down to the south, as we mentioned, Goliad. Kennedy and uh, eastern parts of Atascosa County. Forecast for today is going to keep rain in the picture and you notice that we've got a good flow here off the Gulf of Mexico that continues to bring in quite a bit of moisture and the potential for rainfall 30% chance around noon 40% chance this afternoon. We stay in the active pattern tomorrow, although rain chances start to come down just a little bit. We'll take a closer inspection of that forecast and look ahead to the 4th of July weekend. First, let's go over to Stephen with a look at the roadways this morning. Thanks so much, Justin. You know, it's uh, we we usually see the rain coming in. That's when our roads start to get pretty busy, and we've spotted a few crashes, stalls. And we want everyone to be definitely cautious before heading out the door this morning. Let's go ahead and take a look at this crash that's happening right here off 35 at Loop 1604. Now, from the view of Transguide, it does look like that vehicle has crashed into the barrier there. Uh, right now, again, not clear exactly what caused that crash, but take a look right now on our maps. Uh, this is off I-35 northbound, exit to Loop 1604 westbound, right near the Live Oak area. So be cautious. We are seeing some things popping up on our radar and we are watching them very closely as the morning does develop. Now let's go ahead and bring you to a little bit of a stall that we're now seeing here from this construction a little bit further up I-35 northbound right at FM 1103. You can see traffic still slowing down there to 32 miles per hour. As we showed you a little bit while a little while ago, there was some construction going on out there and uh, with these conditions outside, it could be another roadblock for drivers that are heading in that direction towards New Braunfels. 
But take a look again at this road weather map. Uh, we're going to be showing this to you throughout the morning until the roads dry up or so. But right now we still have a lot of wet roads further out towards Live Oak and even some right near Leon Valley. So we want our drivers again be cautious before heading out the door this morning because we do have some slick roads out there that you need to be cautious of. And where these crashes happen, that's where we're seeing these wet conditions. Again, not clear what caused those crashes, but something to keep in mind before heading out the door. Let's go ahead and jump to our inbound times right now. If you are coming in from Seguin, things are looking green. 29 minutes to the downtown San Antonio area. Coming in from Lavernia, we got 22 minutes on 87. And from Flotusville, 28 minutes. Now we're going to bring it back to this view at Transguide 35 at Loop 1604. First responders on the scene. Give them plenty of room to get this scene clear. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police are looking for a senior slashing suspect, a man with a knife who they say may be in his 80s. He's accused of cutting another man during an argument. Katrina Weber is live outside public safety headquarters with a live report. Katrina, what is this all about? Well, good morning, Tiffany. According to officers at the scene, there was a woman at the center of this dispute. And police say that the senior suspect brought that argument to an end in an especially violent way. Now, they found the victim in the 100 block of Tau Street, far from Highway 90 in South Sarsamora. Someone called them to that area around 11 last night. Witnesses told them the victim, who was in his, in his 30s, had stepped outside a home to talk to a woman. They say a car pulled up with two men inside. Then one got out and started arguing with the victim. The officers told us that suspect, who is about 80 years old, cut the younger man on the arm with a knife, then got back into the car and left, taking the woman with him. The police did not offer much of a description of the getaway car. The man who was cut is expected to be okay. Reporting live from Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Also this morning, health experts say the Delta variant of COVID-19 spreads more easily and could be more dangerous. And as CNN's Britt Conway reports, whether you see an outbreak in your community may depend on where you live. This problem is not going away. Everyone should recognize this pandemic's not over. The virus hasn't gone. In fact, it's still mutating. The Delta variant that ravaged India has now been identified in more than 85 countries, including the U.S., which is why world leaders are working together to ramp up global vaccine distribution. As long as the virus is replicating somewhere, it's likely to be mutating. So we have to get ahead of this. But right now, less than 11% of people around the world are fully vaccinated. Here in the U.S., more than 46% of people have been fully vaccinated. But Alabama, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Wyoming are among the states with the lowest vaccination rates. And those are going to be the more vulnerable parts of this country. It's going to be hyper-regionalized. There are certain pockets of the country where you can have very dense outbreaks. In other words, fewer vaccinations could mean more outbreaks. At this church camp, the Crossing Camp, in rural Illinois, 85 people who were there earlier this month, most of them teens, tested positive for COVID-19. The State Department of Public Health says everyone there was eligible to be vaccinated, but they were aware of only a handful of campers and staff receiving the vaccine. The way out of this crisis is through vaccinations. It's either you get vaccinated and you're exposed, so you're protected, or you don't get vaccinated and you're exposed and you get COVID and you take your chances. Britt Conway, KSAT 12 News. In other news, Costa Rica's Rincón de la Vieja Volcano registered a new eruption Monday, one of its most powerful ones since 2011. The eruption lasted three minutes and spewed volcanic material into nearby rivers. Authorities reported ash fell over areas north of the crater, no major damages. Access to the volcano located in a national park has been closed for the last 10 years due to the volcano's state of activity. AAA says more than 43 million Americans will hit the road this 4th of July weekend. And if you are one of them, depending on where you're going, it might be tough to find some gas. Shortage of tank truck drivers, along with the pandemic-related travel surge, causing a supply chain bottleneck and shortages. A number of areas are already reporting gas shortages, including the Pacific Northwest and Northern California. The trade group National Tank Truck Carriers reports somewhere between 20 to 25 percent of tank trucks are sitting idle across the country. In addition to gas shortages, prices at the pump are the highest they've been since 2014. The national average now 310 per gallon. Time now 538, 74 degrees.
It may soon cost you more if you're paying rent. We'll tell you reasons behind the nationwide increase. Did you know that making your spouse worry too much can lead to an earlier death? Up next, details on a study that shows which spouse is more affected by constant demands. And once again, outside with live cam, you may not be able to tell it right now, but there are showers all around San Antonio and more moving in. That means the skies are wet, the roads are wet. Justin and Stephen will get you updated on those two conditions coming up. You're watching Good Morning San Antonio. Welcome back. It is 541. It is no secret that marriages can be both rewarding and at the same time a little difficult to maintain. But did you know that a little too much nagging by a spouse can actually lead to an earlier death? Sarah Costa has details about which spouse can be affected the most. Couples listen up. Experts say arguing a lot or being constantly berated by your spouse can actually shorten your life. This comes from a study posted by Time.com and published in the Journal of Epidemiology and Community Health. Researchers found men, especially those who don't have a job, were affected the most. The study asked about 10,000 men and women ages 36 to 52 about their social interactions every day. About 9% said they always or often experience demands or worries from their partner. During the 11 year study, about 4% of women and 5% of men died mostly due to cancer, but also things like liver disease from drinking, heart disease and suicide. The study also points out that even taking into account things like gender, depression, available emotional support and social class, those who had frequent demands placed on them had a 50 to 100% of a higher risk of early death. That's compared to those who live more peaceful lives. And data shows men were more vulnerable to frequent worries and demands. Since those who were most affected were also unemployed, researchers say this could be due to lack of resources. Experts say if you're struggling with worrisome or demanding situations, it's always a good idea to get professional help. They can also help you with conflict management. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. <laughs> <laughs> That's just one of those studies. <laughs> it's a study. <laughs> There's just so much. 543-74. Quit nagging. <laughs> Up next, we're checking out a whole new way to send greeting cards thanks to Hallmark's newest app. Both quit nag. Welcome back in your morning consumer headlines. Avanti Frozen Foods has recalled several frozen shrimp products. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says a salmonella outbreak has been linked to the food. The products are sold under the brand names 365, Sensi, Chicken of the Sea, Hannaford, Honest Catch, Mayor, Open Acres, and Waterfront Bistro. The CDC says six people have gotten sick so far. Two were hospitalized. Apartment rent prices soaring again, reaching their highest levels in two years. Among the factors, young adults are setting out on their own again, with many returning to cities as vaccination rates rise and jobs make a comeback. Realtor.com says the average monthly rent at just over $1,500 a month averages across studios, one and two bedroom units. And while rates are higher in some cities than others, 43 of the top 50 metro areas say their rental rates are rising compared to last year. One factor driving up costs, home prices are also hitting record highs, making owning a home less affordable. Hallmark is allowing people to make cards for family and friends by phone. The company announced sign and send technology where people can create their own cards complete with handwritten messages. Users choose a Hallmark card, then upload a photo of a personal message. Hallmark takes the personal message and puts it together as a physical card, which it will stamp and send to the recipient at no additional charge. Hallmark officials say this will allow people, quote, put more care into the world. We've been talking about hit and miss showers all around San Antonio, which means there are some wet roads out there. And we've got that modern technology now to show you where the roads are wet, which is really cool. Yeah, you know, and I think that's one of the great, uh, you know, things that we have here in the traffic lab is that uh, we can show you where we're seeing those wet roads. And right now we are seeing some crashes and stalls. So we want to make sure that drivers are safe. Let's go ahead and show you what's going on here at 35 at loop 1604. You can see that we have a few more first responders that are out there. That's one of those crashes that we were just talking about. 
about up toward Live Oak. You can see that it looks like a wrecker has also arrived on the scene, but traffic now picking up, so be cautious out there. Uh, taking a look right now on the map, this is on I-35 southbound. Earlier we told you it was northbound, but TxDOT is now reporting that that was in the southbound lanes of 35, right at the loop 1604 exit ramp to the westbound lane. So be cautious again. We do have that crash that's working. Now we want to jump over to a stall that came up in our system right here off I-35 southbound at East South Cross Boulevard. This one not creating any issues right now. Again, very early on to where we're not seeing as many people out on the roadways, but we know with these conditions outside, we can see some issues starting to develop later on. But take a look right over here. That road weather map that David was just talking about shows our conditions right now where we're seeing those wet roads. A lot of that up toward Live Oak where that crash was happening. The Converse area. We even have some right at Chavano Park and Holotus. So if this is where you live and you're heading out the door there in the next few minutes, be prepared, pack that umbrella and just take it slow. Both hands on the wheel is the best way to go. And I'm a poet and didn't even know it. <laughs> Bringing it back here to I-35 at loop 1604. We still have this crash that is working. We'll be watching it closely and seeing how the morning develops. And showers are definitely picking up. Yeah, we like well that done. one. <laughs> oh, you know, thank you. Well, thank done. you. Shakespeare who? <laughs> Serious. <laughs> oh, Touch that. Go ahead. Chief. I can't. I don't. I need to get prepared. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a second. I'll sit down and write some stuff. Okay. Uh, the radar showing that we do have some of these uh, showers moving through. Uh, some good downpours just to the west of New Braunfels, starting to see a little bit around Medina Lake. Although I got to tell you, it looks like we're seeing overall a little bit of a decrease in activity. And we'll, we may see things kind of quiet down a little bit before they pick back up again this afternoon. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit closer here to San Antonio. And we got a nice little shower working through far northern Bear County, right into Timberwood Park. So quick uh, downpour there. Marion Seguin, rain starting to come to an end. This was a nice little cluster, but it's starting to kind of fall apart as it moves into Kamal County. Still seeing a little bit of light rain around New Braunfels. And then farther to the south, a uh, nice little area of rain here, far eastern parts of Atascosa County. This may work its way towards I-37 in southern Bear County here within the next half hour or so. But just uh, these scattered downpours, we're going to continue to see that this afternoon. You know, this is a really good pattern. We're not looking at severe weather, it's just good rain. In a lot of cases, some places picked up around an inch yesterday here around San Antonio, and you can see most of Texas uh, dealing with a similar setup. Water vapor. Now you can see a spin in the atmosphere right there. Area of low pressure out in Mexico. It's in a good position for us to continue to draw in uh, Gulf moisture. And so the setup, it looks pretty close to yesterday's setup with scattered showers and scattered downpours. This shows around 3 o'clock, more downpours developing. And then once the sun goes down, you see an overall decrease in activity before it picks back up again tomorrow. I think on Wednesday the coverage will be a little bit less, but there's still a chance for rain with uh, this moist atmosphere in place. Right now, 74 degrees at the airport, 76 in 75 Kelly, 73 at Randolph, 70 is for most of us this morning. Uh, closing in on 80 though in Del Rio, that continues to be the warm spot. Forecast 40% chance of rain, temperatures up around 88 this afternoon. Big picture, we still have those ridges of high pressure out over the coast. The numbers yesterday, nothing short of incredible across Pacific Northwest. Look at these records. Portland all-time max temperature 115, Seattle all-time max temperature 108, Washington state all-time max temperature 118, and Canada's all-time max temperature since records have been kept 118 yesterday. Temperatures will be a little bit cooler today, but still hot nonetheless as you get up towards uh, Canada. These numbers have been just incredible. That high pressure, one we haven't seen. Uh, and may not see for a long, long time. Those numbers off the charts. 40% chance of rain today, 30% chance tomorrow, then just some slight chances Thursday, Friday. I think that's probably two of our drier days, and then the rain picks back up this weekend. 40% chance both Saturday and Sunday. Like those numbers. Yeah, they look good. For us, it's, it's, yep. it's weird to think that we're in the 80s, and they've got triple digits up there in Seattle. Wacky weather. It is. Thank you, Justin. 553, 74 degrees. Let's take a look at your lotto numbers. Your pick three, nine, nine, zero, fireball zero. Your daily four, six, five, zero, four, fireball nine. Cash five is four, 20, 26, 31, 33. And your Texas two step two, 23, 24, 30. And your bonus ball is six.
It is a world famous tourist attraction known as the Cradle of Texas Liberty. But over the past several years, there have been disagreements about how the story about the Battle of the Alamo is told. Tonight, the Case That Explains team is taking a look at the history of the Spanish mission, as well as how the 1836 battle has been portrayed over the past century in pop culture. Also during this live stream, Chris Tomlinson, author of the recently released book, Forget the Alamo, We'll join Case That Explains reporter R.J. Marquez for a live Q&A. You can catch the live stream tonight at 7 o'clock on KSAT.com, the KSAT TV app, and KSAT's Facebook page. And we've got a lot heading your way in our next hour of Good Morning San Antonio, including a startling report about a student testing following the pandemic. Just ahead, why it has some educators here in Texas pretty concerned. Plus, an explosion in North Texas where it happened and what investigators are now saying about the incident. And crews continue to go through the rubble following the massive condo collapse after the break. We'll have the latest and a live report from Surfside, Florida. And as we go to break, here's a look at traffic. We've had a few incidents on the road. They are wet in some areas. To so be careful, Justin Horn's got your forecast. Stephen Cavazos gets you up to date on traffic. And of course, all the latest news. We'll be right back. You're watching Good Morning San Antonio. This morning, San Antonio police looking for an elderly man. They say cut a younger man. We've got the latest details. And taking a live look outside with live cam, wet roads out there. Stephen and Justin tracking it all for you. Coming up. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning. It is Tuesday, June 29th. Thanks for waking up with us. We'll get to weather and traffic in just a few minutes. But first, we begin this hour with the latest out of Florida as a desperate search in Surfside is now in its sixth day. Crews still sifting through the remnants of the collapsed condo as families are desperate for answers. Investigators say the work is deliberate and treacherous. Two more bodies were found yesterday. That brings the death toll to 11 and leaves 150 people still unaccounted for. CNN's Daryl Forges is staying on top of this story. He joins us live from the scene. Good morning. It's day six in the search and right now crews continue to work around the clock looking for any signs of life. Now, according to crews, they say that the process has been slow, but they are making progress and speaking to family members. They're still hoping they're still praying, but at the same time demanding answers. The death toll is rising in Surfside along with the desperation. We have uh, people waiting and waiting and waiting for news that is excruciating. The community clings to hope while 150 people remain still unaccounted for as rescue workers from across Florida and from Israel and Mexico are fighting the clock and trying to keep themselves safe from further collapse. The number one priority here is pulling these people out of the rubble and we're going to focus only on that. The second priority is supporting the family. As questions mount over the cause of the collapse, the mayor of Surfside says his focus remains on finding survivors. There's plenty of time for the investigation, but there's not plenty of time to save lives. The investigation into the cause could take months, but a 2018 report revealed several things, including major structural damage below the pool deck. An attorney for the condominium board says she didn't think the building was in a state of disrepair prior to the collapse. We have months and years to dig into what happened and we're going to. The board is already in the process of, of hiring an engineer to also try to figure out what happened and they will be evaluating who's responsible. Family members of those missing are demanding answers. If in 2018 the damage was already so severe, why didn't they do anything? And praying for miracles. And that's the big thing right now. Many are praying for is a miracle. Now, in wake of the collapse, there is a countywide building audit, including for several buildings, really 500 buildings in Miami Beach and 39 in Surfside. Now, we do know that Miami Dade County officials will continue to update us throughout the day, especially within the next couple of hours, to give us the latest information on their search. Live in Surfside, I'm Daryl Forges. Thank you, Daryl. This is a story we are continuing to follow closely on air and online. We posted news stories overnight on our website about the efforts there as crews continue the desperate search. And look for the latest on this story coming up on Good Morning America beginning at 7. 
and back here at home showers are picking up and it's picking up on the roads as well. Justin has been looking at some radar movement movement movement. Yes, uh, everything's moving northwest. Uh, we've seen some showers on the radar this morning. It, look, it's not just terribly widespread at the moment. I think as we get into the afternoon, like yesterday, you'll see kind of clusters of showers and storms. If you're one of the lucky few, you'll maybe pick up an inch of rain. Most of us, quarter, half an inch, if you get underneath one of these downpours. Here's the situation right now. We had some showers move through San Antonio earlier. Most of San Antonio is dry at the moment. Uh, we noticed that uh, we still have a little cluster of showers working through the northeast side. Selma shirts, you got a good... Uh, downpour earlier, Garden Ridge, same story. That little shower has moved up towards Timberwood Park in Bolverde. Still seeing a few showers around Green as well, New Braunfels, and then down towards Lavernia, seeing a, a shower or two. Floresville, you got a little bit of rain, and then far eastern parts of Atascosa County. Now, this is starting to move into southern Bear County there, right along I 37. So there's going to be some wet roads as you go south out of San Antonio this morning. And scattered nature of this will continue. We've got more good moisture coming in from the Gulf of Mexico. 40% chance of rain as we get into the afternoon. Temperatures like yesterday are going to struggle to get out of the 80s. That's beautiful. The below average temperatures, and we'll probably see a little bit more of that tomorrow with some more chances for rain and more chances of rain by the weekend for the 4th of July weekend. We're going to detail that forecast coming up in just a little bit. We got an early start to some of the traffic problems this morning. How's it looking now, Stephen? Some good news, Justin, uh, for our friends over at 35 at Loop 1604, and looks like Transguide is working to get us a different shot here. Take a look. Looks like things are moving nice and smoothly. That scene that where we showed you that crash has since cleared, so things and drivers are on their way right now. So let's go ahead and take a look at where that crash actually happened. So if you're heading out the door, this crash is no longer there just cleared from our system. I-35 southbound exits loop 1604 westbound. Now it did appear that a car had a, hit a barrier there and it was there for quite a while, but looks like things have cleared once again. So some pretty good news there. Uh, now what we're really spotting now are some stalls. This went off loop 1604 eastbound right at Redland, not causing any delays right now. Still early enough, but the morning is just getting started and drivers are getting out on the roads. Another stall over here at 37 southbound right at East South Cross Boulevard. So this has been the main theme of this morning, some crashes and stalls. But we do want to show you the scope of where that rain had come in. As Justin was talking about right by Timberwood, there are some wet roads out there up 281 and even on coming in from New Braunfels or coming down from New Braunfels off 35 all the way down to Live Oak. We're still seeing those slick roads out out, out there, guys. So just be cautious. And as we said, both hands on the wheel and take it extra slow this morning. Bringing it here to our inbound times. If you are coming into the downtown San Antonio area, perhaps coming in from Lytle right now we have 17 minutes on 35 and if you're coming in from Castroville on Highway 90 we have 19 minutes coming in from Bernie on I 10 we have a 25 minute commute time for you but again if you are coming up uh, from any of these locations 35 uh, coming in from New Braunfels you're going to want to be cautious because the roads are still wet this morning taking one last look here at 35 at loop 1604 uh, looks like we have a little droplets on the camera there from Transguide but overall things are looking pretty good. All right, Stephen, thank you much. New this morning, San Antonio police looking for a man they believe cut another man during an argument. The suspect could be in his 80s. It happened around 11 last night. Officers said they found the victim in his 30s in the 100 block of Taos Street, not far from Highway 90 in South Zarzamora. According to witnesses, the victim was taken, was talking with a woman. When a car pulled up next to him, the suspect then got out of the car, cut the victim, and then took off. We're going to have more on this story later on GMSA. Katrina Weber will be standing by live in a few minutes. An argument between two men in their 20s ends with one of them being shot. It happened last night on the city's northeast side in the 6900 block of North Van Diver Road near Eisenhower. That's where police say one of the men pulled out a gun and shot the other man in the upper abdomen before taking off. Officers caught up with the suspect and questioned him. The victim was taken to the hospital in critical condition. New details this morning about how students here in Texas are doing on their standardized tests in the wake of the pandemic. According to new release test results, students who did most of their learning remotely suffered significant declines. That's especially true when it comes to reading and math. In districts where fewer than a quarter of classes were held in person, the number of students who met math test expectations dropped by 32 percent, and the number of students who met reading expectations dropped by 9 percent. The Texas Education Commission says that's why the decision to prioritize in-person instruction was critical. 
You can read more about this story on KSAT.com. Time now, 6.08, 74 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, a look at why one historian sees Don Jose Antonio Navarro as the father of Texas. And a look outside with live cam, 74 degrees. If you're leaving your house, take an umbrella just in case. Justin will have your forecast coming up. And welcome back. It is 6, 11, 11 minutes after 6 o'clock. Last week in our Tejano Moments series, we talked about Don Jose Antonio Navarro and the role he played in Texas politics. And now in the final part of our series, we are talking to a local historian about why he thinks Navarro is the true father of Texas. GMSA producer Rosalind Jimenez has a story. We talked earlier about uh, his ascension politically uh, uh, in business. And uh, he's at the pinnacle. He's at the height of his career politically. And at a time period, the revolution is brewing. Rudy Rodriguez, a local historian and founder of TexasTejano.com, says by 1835, Tejanos and Texians came together to claim liberty. Don Jose and his uncle, Colonel Francisco Ruiz, were elected to represent Bear County. They went on to sign the Texas Declaration in 1836. Several weeks later, the Alamo fell. Then, finally, victory during the Battle of San Jacinto set Texas free. He's exactly the man that Texas needs at that moment. About a decade later, Nevada was the only Tejano delegate in the Convention of 1845. He voted for annexation and helped write the first state constitution. He was also elected twice to the state Senate before retiring from politics in 1849. Because of his political contributions, some have called him Father of Texas, a title most often held by Stephen F. Austin. But Rodriguez says he feels Navarro is the one worthy of the title. He epitomized the, the success, the strength of uh, a businessman, uh, a politician. Uh, he represents uh, a family, uh, his family, a uh, family at Tejanos that have been here for over a hundred years. Uh, he represents that. He's also someone that uh, defines society and culture. I would suggest that certainly he, he merits uh, the title of uh, father of Texas. Novato's political success is just one of the many things that he did that helped make Texas what it is today. Rosalind Jimenez, KSAT 12 News. If you missed the first two parts of Navarro's story, you can find them right now on KSAT.com. Just search Tejano Moments later on GMSA at 9 a.m. Rosalind will also be joining us for a live debrief about the series. Oh, well, let's get into a little sports this morning. San Antonio Mission's back in action tonight at Wolf Stadium. They set to host the divisional rival Corpus Christi Hooks. The Hooks currently sitting right behind San Antonio in the division standing. Missions are 23 and 25, Hooks 22-26. The series begins tonight and will run through Sunday. And as of now, Spurs assistant Becky Hammond is still a Spurs assistant, but her journey to become the first female head coach in the NBA continues. However, there is better news for another former Spurs assistant coach. Congratulations are in order for Ime Udoka. He has been introduced as the new head coach of the Boston Celtics, the 18th head coach in that storied franchise. He takes over for Brad Stevens, who moves up into the Celtics front office as the president of the team, succeeding Danny Ainge, who announced his retirement. Udoka played professional basketball for 12 years, seven in the NBA before he headed into coaching. He was an assistant under Spurs head coach Greg Popovich for seven seasons before moving to Philadelphia and then most recently over to Brooklyn to coach the Nets. He says one thing that will help him with some of the game's superstars is his time as an assistant under Pop. You know, it's an honor to be part of this historic franchise and in our conversations and in the interviews, the Zoom interviews, it, it was pretty evident and clear early on that me and Brad had a pretty good connection. Um, and when I got with the whole crew, Allison as well, it was it was their passion that, that was attractive to me. Obviously, the roster is great, but the relationships I have with those players and it's, it's easy to see why this, this, this organization has been so successful. The people I've met today, um, it, it it's, takes me to my San Antonio days and whether it's Philadelphia, Brooklyn, good people in the good building. And, and I look forward to having the success with you guys. The relationships have been great and I look forward to building those. But um, as far as the players and the roster, I'm very excited, honored to be part of it. And like you said, let's go for 18. 
He's talking about the 18th championship for the Celtics. Once again, congratulations to Ime. One of the people he's expected to add to his staff is Spurs assistant coach Will Hardy. It looks like that could be a done deal pretty soon. Meanwhile, Kawhi Leonard not in Phoenix last night. They didn't want him flying because of his knee condition. Even though his Clippers are facing elimination from here on out in the Western Conference Finals, Leonard staying behind in Los Angeles to take care of that knee. It has kept him out of action since game four of the Western Conference semifinals. However, last night, Phoenix, with a chance to close out the series at home, didn't do it. Clippers start strong with their season on the line and didn't slow down. Terrence Mann muscles inside for two. He jumped out to a 7-0 lead. The Suns get back in it. Cameron Johnson hits the three. Phoenix pulls within six. Clippers strike late in the quarter, though. Reggie Jackson scores high off the glass with .4 left in the quarter. L.A. is up after one 36-26 and they cruise to victory. They turn it up late in the game. And look at this, 116 to 102 is the final. So now the series is 3-2. Phoenix still leads, but they're hanging on. Now more people are on the road. Stephen, how's it looking like out there? Uh, it's looking pretty busy right now. Lots of stalls this morning. David, Tiffany, take a look at what's happening here off the, uh, the view from Transguide. It shows 281 at SA River. Now, we do have a stalled vehicle out there. Somebody getting some assistance right now. Looks like they're off on the shoulder lane. Some cones are in place, so be cautious when heading in that direction. Taking a look right here at the map, 281 northbound at St. Mary Street is where that stall is being reported on TxDOT's website. Uh, but that seems to be the theme of the morning. Lots of stalls uh, and lots of wet roads. Let's go ahead and jump to another stall happening here off loop 1604 eastbound right at Redland, not creating any issues, but we got another one that's happened right over here off I-37 southbound at East South Cross. So again, the theme of the morning stall. So be sure to check your cars before heading out on the roads this morning. And as we mentioned, there are still some wet roads that we're seeing out in the area, particularly all that green. If you're familiar with this, this is our road weather map that shows the wet roads, which again, all that green means we still have out in the areas such as New Braunfels, right in the Converse, Lavernia, even as far up over our friends uh, in Holotus. Uh, that blue over there means that we do have some ponding. So just be cautious again, heading in those directions. But looks like mostly here in San Antonio, the roads are dried up, which is a good sign. Now, uh, some closures to be in mind uh, you want to be aware of actually that's taking place this week. This one off I-10 over in the far east side lane closure, single westbound main lanes from FM 1516 to Wood Lake Parkway. Now, this is going to be going on through Friday from 9 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon. What they're doing there, it's just some barrier removal. Again, this is going to be happening today, so just be aware of that if you are heading in that direction. But bringing it back here to Transguide one last time, Justin, seems like the roads are drying up a little bit here in town, but what can more uh, can people expect? Yeah, we'll have a chance to dry out a little bit, I think, this morning before more showers and storms kick in this afternoon. I want to start first with a beautiful picture on our KSAC Connect. Uh, Taylor always sends in some great photos, especially of Woodlawn Lake, but this was the scene last night, those storms bubbling up there in the distance. We did have a couple more showers develop right around sunset last night. Beautiful shot, beautiful colors. Very comfortable last night. Now we're getting more showers and storms developing. And you can see some of these are trying to make their way up into San Antonio. We've had some hit or miss showers this morning. Some decent rain around Seguin a little bit earlier. And the pipeline shows that we've got more on the way. Deeper moisture that continues to funnel in here around South Texas. There's a look, closer look at San Antonio right now. I, I generally we're pretty quiet, but we are starting to see some uh, showers pop up there just to the east of Mitchell Lake this morning. And I think some of this activity is going to work up in the San Antonio, Lackland, Palo Alto College area. You can see some of this activity here within the next uh, 30 minutes or so. There's a little closer look at some of that heavier rain, and that's right along I-37 as it's coming out of Bear County into Atascosa County and now moving up towards the 1604 area there on the south side. So 281, 1604, some heavy rain coming down at the moment. And these are just good downpours, not a lot of lightning or thunder with this, just some decent rain. And you see some activity too around uh, Kennedy, Carn City, uh, down towards Bevo. Although in general, this looks like it's starting to die down just a little bit with a little bit of new development out towards Goliad. Yesterday, the numbers were good. We picked up an inch of rain in some cases, not necessarily here in San Antonio, but around the area. And we have a little spin in the atmosphere still over Mexico. This is in a good position for us. Should continue to bring in some showers and some moisture, as we mentioned. Forecast calls for scattered showers and storms this afternoon. This is around 3 o'clock. Some good downpours. As we get into tomorrow, similar setup, although I think the coverage is going to be a little bit less. Uh, high pressure is trying to build in tomorrow, and so we may not see as much. The chance is still there, though. Mostly cloudy right now, 74 at the airport. East Julie winds at 7, temperatures in the 70s for most of us. 
So it's a warm up muggy morning. No surprise there. And the forecast calls for a high right around 88 this afternoon. 40% chance of rain really blanketed across the area. Just about everybody has that chance. Very quickly, we'll check in on the tropics. Enrique, tropical storm, you will weaken as it moves towards Cabo. Yesterday, we had a very quick forming tropical storm. Danny, it's falling apart. Still bringing some rain, though, the parts of Georgia and Alabama. And then we have another system out in the Atlantic that we've been watching for several days now. This will make its way towards the islands, the Leeward Islands, tomorrow. 40% chance of development with this particular area of disturbed weather. For our forecast, no tropical weather, just some chances of showers and storms. 40% chance today, 30% chance tomorrow. Less in the way of rain chances Thursday and Friday, but it picks back up Saturday, Sunday. Could be a little bit wet for the 4th of July with a high of 89, guys. You know those people up in the northwest are just sweltering under those triple digits, and they're looking down at us going, wait a minute. What is what is what is going on in They're like, what happened? <laughs> it's a weird setup. There's no two ways around it. Yeah. Feel bad for them. Yeah. yeah. 622, 74 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, our GMA first look at what could be the biggest travel weekend of the year. Had enough? No. Arthritis. Here. New aspirin cream arthritis. Prescription strength reduces inflammation. Thank the gods. Don't thank them too soon. Kick pain in the asper cream. New Klondike cones. Experience the chocolate tip. Examine the full sauce core. Bask in a downpour of peanuts. Our new scented oils give you our best smelling scents. Now crafted with more natural ingredients and infused with essential oils that are 100% natural. Give us one plug and connect to nature. Mm. Cranky pated, a bad mood related to a sluggish gut. Miralax is different. It works naturally with the water in your body to unblock your gut. <sighs> Free your gut and your mood will follow. In this morning's GMA First Look, counting down to what could be the biggest travel weekend of the year. More than 47 million people expected to hit the roads and skies for the holiday weekend, potentially making it the second highest 4th of July travel volume on record. Compared to 2019, travel volume by car is actually up. The 43 million of Americans that are going to be traveling by car for the holiday, that's 5% more than we saw in 2019. And by air, 3.5 million are expected to fly. American Airlines is still canceling dozens of flights per day because of a major pilot shortage. And Southwest has canceled hundreds in the last week, blaming weather and IT issues. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have the tips and tricks you need to beat the rush, avoid the cancellation crush, and still have a great with your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News. I was just relaxing and getting into the story. I know. That's what I was. <laughs> very I wonder, comfortable. I to find out how many people are actually going to fly this weekend because it is July 4th and it's going to be very busy at the airports. Very busy. That's what I got out of that. <laughs> we'll be right back. Florida condo collapse death toll rises again, but search and rescue teams are still hopeful. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Miami Beach. The latest coming up. There's a live look outside with City Cam. If your alarm's just going off, yeah, we've been dealing with a little bit of rain here and there this morning and expected a little bit more later on this afternoon. Good morning. It is Tuesday, June 29th. Thanks for joining us this morning. We are seeing more movement this morning on the radar. Justin, what can you tell us about what's happening right now? Mm, showers, more showers. It's been a sort of a rainy pattern for us yesterday. Some good numbers around the area, some encouraging rainfall. We're going to do it again today. More chances. So if you didn't get rain yesterday, Tiffany, there's more rain for you this afternoon. Let's look at the uh, radar right now. You see some of the showers working through the area. Everything's moving north and west. San Antonio's had a little bit of a lull, but we're starting to see more activity move in on the city's south side, right along 1604, just east of Somerset. We had some showers that moved through earlier. Those are working their way towards Bernie this morning. Also into parts of Bandera County. Seguin and New Braunfels got some rain earlier. And uh, there's that rain I mentioned along 1604. So here is 281 here, Mitchell Lake, just to the south of that. 
and then a highway 16 and 1604 you're about to get some rain as well uh, welcome rain I'd say for uh, for most of us uh, thankfully we haven't had a lot of flooding issues or anything like that these are just passing downpours and there's more coming in from the Gulf of Mexico so the activity will be around today especially once we get some daytime heating now one thing the rain does do is kick up the mold typically and that's what we saw yesterday. Mold jumped up to 1540. Beware if mold is something that bugs you. It'll likely be elevated again today. 40% chance rain as we get into the afternoon. Temperatures will top out close to 88 this afternoon. Easterly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. My friend Steven's been working hard over there in the traffic lab. Looks like we've got a few more issues out there. What's going on? Yeah, you know, the theme of the morning, as we said, Justin seems to be stalls and a lot of this rain. This is a view from 37 at Jones Avenue. Traffic picking up this morning, and it looks a little gloomy from this shot at Trans Guide. But drivers need to expect some wet roads, as we've been talking about all morning long. That's definitely going to impact their conditions as they get out on the roadways this morning. And you want to be extra cautious, of course, extra safe. So again, as we mentioned, stalls seem to be the big issue right now. 281 northbound at St. Mary Street. We showed you this a little bit earlier. We just checked trans guide cameras right now. It does look like that has since cleared, but we are watching 281 closely because it looks like there may be another incident that was reported out there again, watching that throughout the morning. So stay with us here on GMSA for the latest updates. State Highway 151 eastbound at Loop 410. Another stalled vehicle out over here. It says crash right now because again, we are monitoring these conditions uh, that just again seems to be a stalled vehicle out there, but we want everyone to be cautious when they're heading out the door this morning. This crash over here is what we want to talk about. Also, of I-10 eastbound at Vance Jackson Road. Uh, now that more drivers are getting out on the roadways, they want to be a little safe and take some caution there because, again, we are spotting some crashes and stalls and those wet roads. But let's go ahead and get to the inbound times right now. Coming in from Bulverde, 281, we got 26 minutes. And coming in from New Braunfels on 35, we have 26 minutes for you as well. And 30 minutes coming in from Seguin on I-10. And again, the main issue right now is going to be the stalled vehicles and those wet roads. A lot of these wet roads we're still spotting out here up towards 35 and I-10. So just some uh, advice. Bring that umbrella with you this morning with that cup of coffee and pack your patience. Be extra slow on the roads. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. One woman is in jail for throwing an axe at her ex-girlfriend. It happened back on June 25th at a home in the 3200 block of Bob Billa Street. That's on the city's southeast side. According to an arrest affidavit, 27-year-old Samantha Deande got into a fight with her ex-girlfriend. That argument escalated and led to Deande throwing an axe towards the victim, cutting her arm in the process. Deande is charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Her bond is set at $30,000. San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers asking for your help in finding an arson suspect. The incident happened back on April 7th at Islas Automotive in the 1400 block of Kleber Road. Officers say the person on your screen used a Molotov cocktail to set fire to a vehicle parked outside of the auto shop. Arson investigators believe the owner of the shop was the intended target of the crime. If you have any information about the case, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. Now to the latest on a story we first brought you here on GMSA. We're hearing from a family affected by a fire that destroyed their apartment building. It happened yesterday on the city's northwest side at the residences at medical apartments on Babcock. San Antonio fire officials are still trying to figure out what sparked that fire. One family of seven says they were awakened by the flames. I don't sleep, you know. I keep smelling this stuff, you know. When I wake up, my family, you know, the fires big and this roof you know and that point that point you know you, you can you know got hand for nothing you know just take care of your family and that's same you know the family says the american red cross is helping them the apartment complex is also offering another unit to eight total families affected this morning authorities have pulled two more victims from the rubble of that collapsed florida condo building the death toll has now risen to 11 as 150 people remain unaccounted for abc's faith abube is near the scene with the latest in the search and rescue operation this morning officials mentally preparing loved ones of those still missing in the florida condo building collapse of the grim reality we have them coping with the news that they might not have their loved ones come out alive and still hope against hope that they will. But hope and faith still driving the effort as search and rescue teams make progress through the debris. 
There are certain areas that we have not gotten to, but we've been able to place cameras that seem to have large enough spaces, voids, that occupants may still be in there. The investigation into what caused the sudden collapse also intensifying. A report in the Wall Street Journal citing a letter reportedly written by the Condo Association president just this April, explaining the need for millions of dollars in repairs, warning that damage to the building's basement garage had gotten significantly worse since the 2018 inspection. The Miami Herald also publishing these photos, not independently confirmed by ABC News, saying it shows cracks in the concrete, exposed rebar and wet floor in the pool equipment room, which is in the garage under the pool deck. They were taken less than two days before the collapse. Experts say it appears the failure started at the bottom of the building. When I look at the video, I feel it looks like it starts from the bottom of the building and works its way up. 88-year-old Esther Gorfinkel was in the building when part of it came crashing down. In my old age, that I would see something so horrible like this. And I'm seeing all the rumble, all the, the cement, the ceiling, everything is falling down. And people are yelling, I don't know how many people are going, help me, help me, get me out. And that resident, Steve Rosenthal, is now suing the Condo Association for, among other things, negligence. In Miami Beach, Faith Abube, ABC News. Back here in Texas, two people are dead this morning and three others hurt following an explosion in North Texas. It happened yesterday afternoon around 4 p.m. in Famersville. That's just northeast of Dallas. Investigators say it happened at a natural gas facility called Atmos Energy. The people involved in the blast were contractors. Collin County's sheriff says the explosion appears to be an accident, but the investigation continues. We have more information on this story posted on KSAT.com. President Joe Biden scheduled to speak in La Crosse, Wisconsin today. The White House says he'll try to drum up support for a bipartisan infrastructure deal. He'll also talk about agricultural and rural economies. Agriculture Secretary Tom Vislak is set to join President Biden for the trip. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is holding out hope for a broader infrastructure package than the Senate Republicans currently have on the table. Time now, 638, 74 degrees outside. Earlier this month, Kesa told you about the legacy of the Bonham Exchange and its impact on the local LGBTQ plus community. Now we're hearing more about the unique history behind the San Antonio landmark. That's coming up next on GMSA. Earlier this month, our KSAT Explains team told you about the legacy of the Bonham Exchange and the impact it's had on the local LGBTQ community. RJ Marquez tells us more about the building itself and the unique history behind the San Antonio landmark. The Bonham Exchange in the heart of downtown San Antonio is one of the most successful gay nightclubs in the country. The history of the building dates back to the 1890s when it was built for a German athletic club. The Turners were a German gentleman's health group dedicated to the male physique. They uh, had originally built this building uh, with the intent of it being many stories higher than it was. Turner Hall included a bowling alley, a ballroom, and a basketball court, but closed in 1932. They end up selling the building to the military. And during World War II, it's turned into a USO club and painted olive drab. The building then became a storage facility for the U.S. Postal Service, but by 1980 was in need of major repairs. It needed $150,000 worth of repairs, and the Postmaster General said, take a match to it. That's when Arthur Hap Veltman, a visionary local developer and business leader, stepped in to buy it. We were just talking, and he looks at me and he goes, Joni, I want to buy that building. And he's the only man I ever knew that could look at a building like this and be able to buy it. Hap fell in love with the three-story, 25,000 square foot building for its unique architecture and history. He opened the Bonham Exchange in 1981. Veltman was openly gay and wanted the nightclub to make a statement by having it right next to the Alamo. He had the clout to make that statement. It was important to him that people in the city accept that there's a big population of gays in San Antonio, and this is gonna be our space. Hap died in 1988, but Joan and many others have made his vision a reality, operating an inclusive nightclub that's withstood the test of time. If you've got a combination of good, good uh, music, good drinks, and friendly people that welcome you in, that's uh, uh, a recipe for success. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. 
To learn more about this iconic downtown building and the great stories behind it, check out our Case That Explains episode on the history of the legacy of the Bonham Exchange. It is out now and you can stream it at ksat.com slash explains or on the KSAT TV app on most streaming services. All right, we've had some difficulty on the roads, as you might expect, because they've been a little wet this morning. Yeah, you know, and when Justin's busy, I'm busy. So, you know, we want to make sure that we're watching not just the weather, but the roadways as well. Uh, taking a look here at I-10 at Days of Allah, you can see that it's still a little bit wet out over there. We have some vehicles uh, that are getting out on the roadway just now as the morning is picking up. So take it slow, take it easy, guys, because the roads are still slick in some areas. Now, we did have a crash that was reported here off I-35 northbound at Loop 410. Uh, looks like that crash has since cleared, thankfully, over the last few moments before we came up. So nothing too major right now, but the big issue that we've been spotting are just stalls around the area. Those have since cleared, but take a look at this road weather map. So you're going to want to be prepared. Make sure you check your cars, your tire, your oils, because we still have those wet roads out there off uh, coming up here from Seguin on New Braunfels and even up here, as we just showed you on I-10, that green does mean slick roads. The blue means we have ponding if you're familiar with that. So we usually like to monitor this road weather map when the rain comes in. So take it easy out on the roadways, guys, bringing it back here to I-10 at Days of Olive. The day's getting started, but drivers, take it slow. And Justin, how much rain did we get yesterday? Here in San Antonio, nothing. <laughs> well, well, at the airport, I got to be very clear about that because some spots Weird. around San Antonio did. Yeah, well, you got the big gap right up there, a little hole. Hole right there. Up in there. So if you were north side of San Antonio <laughs> yep. or at the airport, you didn't get much. Stinson did get seven hundredths of an inch. And there were some big numbers yesterday, over an inch around Pipe Creek. Places like Sutherland Springs, a quarter of an inch or close to it. Uh, Seguin only picked up two hundredths of an inch, but you got rain this morning. So we added to that total, uh, even around Divine, about 1.18. There are more chances today for some storms and downpours. We've already seen some this morning. In fact, here at the station, we just got a downpour. It lasted literally 30 seconds. And now we're looking at a beautiful sunrise. But that is the nature of this activity. It'll be quick moving. It'll put down some brief heavy rain and then move right along. Let's zoom in a little bit closer here to San Antonio. And uh, that quick shower that moved through downtown is now moving uh, north uh, towards I-10. But the heavier of the rain, it's down along 1604. That is also tracking out to the north and west near Palo Alto College. We've also seen a few showers up there near Bernie uh, and just to the east of Bandera. And a little closer look at these uh, downpours here on the south side moving towards uh, 16 there. Uh, trying to get a little bit closer to I-35 Palo Alto College. This is just to your south and seeing a little bit of new development there along I-35 as well. That'll make its way up towards Lackland. And so there certainly could be some white roads out there as Stephen has pointed out all morning long. Here's a bigger picture and good flow from the Gulf of Mexico. Deep moisture continues to move in. We've got a swirl in the atmosphere, area of low pressure that's helping to bring in that deeper moisture. And with the heating of the day, you get the instability in those showers. They pop up and the radar will get pretty busy this afternoon. That's what our forecast is showing us. This is around three o'clock. Does show scattered downpours and tomorrow. Pretty similar, although high pressure is trying to build in a little bit more tomorrow, so we may see a little bit less than way of coverage. The opportunity is still there. Nonetheless, there's the scene outside. A few clouds are off in the distance. 74 at the airport, 75 Kelly, 72 Randolph. Temperatures in the 70s for most of us we will make it into the 80s this afternoon with some humidity and we'll top out close to 88 degrees with a 40% chance of rain here in San Antonio. The big picture still looking at big ridge of high pressure on both coasts. We had a little tropical storm move in there around Georgia. That's Danny. It's going to dissipate today, but the big story up across the Pacific Northwest is the heat. Yesterday, these were the high temperatures 104 in Seattle, 112 in Portland. Uh, and the numbers were just huge. Uh, in fact, Portland, it should say 115. They got up to an all time high maximum temperature there. Seattle uh, got up to 108 and Washington, the, the state itself got up to 118, which is an all time max temperature. And then Canada as a country. saw it's all time maximum temperature of 118. The numbers have been just incredible. We do not get high pressure systems over the Pacific Northwest like this. It is very unusual. And keep in mind that San Antonio's all time record high is 111. So they're beating our all time record high up there. And there's more heat on the way today, although temperatures should come down just a little bit around Seattle and Portland. Good news. Our forecast calls for a high right around 90 coming up tomorrow. 30% chance of rain 92 Thursday. I think Thursday and Friday, some of our drier days, but then the rain chances pick back up Saturday 
and Sunday. Right now, it looks like we could see more scattered downpours over the weekend. Now, I've seen anywhere from 35% to 50% to of people up there have AC. That's it. So you can only imagine what those people are going through. They average 70s and 80s this time of year, wow. not these numbers. Yes, yeah. unbelievable. And then they look at us and we're like in the 80s. Like, what? It's a weird situation. What's wrong with this picture? <laughs> Thanks, Justin. Nothing. We like it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, we'll take it. We're good. Yeah. 649, 74 degrees. Coming up today on GMSA at 9, we are taking a deeper dive into our most recent Tejano Moments series. GMSA producer Rosalyn Jimenez will join us with all the details. Be sure to tune in. And back outside with live cam as we go to break, we'll be back to uh, wrap up some weather and some traffic for you in just a minute. Get you on your final leg as you hit the road today. Good morning, coming up here on GMA, unfortunately starting again in Surfside, Florida with the search for survivors. And they still do have hope. Crews are working around the clock and hearing stories now of survival from those people that did survive that horrific night. Also, investigators are narrowing their search as they look for answers about what might have caused the building collapse. You'll see that and so much more coming up right here on GMA. This morning, the historic heat wave is bringing the hottest temperatures ever recorded in the Pacific Northwest. It has been pretty brutal. Portland hitting 115 degrees Monday, shattering the city's all-time heat record for the third consecutive day. Very incredible numbers out there. Something we've never seen here in Western Oregon or in Southwestern Washington, Lincoln. As you can see, 115 degrees. That 115 temperature is 42 degrees hotter than the average June day for Portland. In Seattle, the mercury hit 106 degrees, breaking that city's all-time heat record set just the day before. The dangerous heat hitting a region accustomed to mild weather, where many people don't have air conditioning. Right now, several hotels in the Seattle area are posting no vacancy signs as people book rooms to stay cool. I've lived all over um, from Southern Virginia to Mississippi to Los Angeles, and I've never had to do this in my life. To the south, hot and dry conditions also fueling wildfires in California, including the so-called lava fire along the Oregon border. Up to 10,000 residents nearby were placed under evacuation orders after authorities say lightning sparked the fire over the weekend. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. Good morning, sunshine. Take a look right behind me. You have a really nice shot of Transguide. Looks like the sun is coming out here from 35 at FM 1103, making me smile. But we do have some wet roads that we still want people to be aware of before they get out and get their day started. Take a look right here at our road weather map. We've been showing it to you all morning long. You're probably very familiar with it by now, but all this green does mean we still have wet roads out as far as New Braunfels and Seguin and some even down here in Lavernia. So take it easy out on the roadways. We'll be watching the uh, Transguide very close and text dot, but taking a look at our inbound times, things look pretty good so far. Bringing it back here to 35 at FM 1103. Justin, uh, may people bring their sunglasses with them today? Is that a good idea? Sunglasses, umbrella, you're going to have to switch off a little bit <laughs> uh, off and on showers today. The chance is still there. I noticed your map showed a little bit of ponding down there in Southern Bear County. No surprise. Some good showers moving through there. 1604 on the south side, uh, now moving towards 410 on the south side. About a 40% chance of rain through the day today. Temperatures in the upper 80s. And we'll see some more chances even as we get into the weekend, guys. Thanks for joining us this morning. All right, we'll see you back here for Good Morning San Antonio at 9. In the meantime, GMA is next. Have a great Tuesday.